talk just a little bit about the league. I know you yeah. did that pregame interview with uh, Dave Tingley just before the game, but overall, you know, what's your view on the league this year? St. John's joining as a new team, but we've talked about it on our broadcast all season. It seems that more than ever, there's parity right across the league. Your thoughts? Well, the Atlantic Division, anyone can, can win this thing. I mean, it's, it's you're seeing parity. We, you know, I talked about Corey Allman. There we go, make that call. <laughs> He's in, calling back to D.C. Saying, hey, everybody, how you doing? I'm doing all right here in Moncton. I didn't hear the telephone ring. What happened? I missed that. <laughs> but that's your question. I mean, you know, you, you, if you want an example of the parity and the competitiveness of this league, you know, you, you, you look at the transaction deadline uh, and you know, the, the busiest one this league has ever seen. Well, there was all kinds of activity. My eyes were rolling, my head was spinning, checking out Twitter <laughs> that day. And Double A, to your point, yep. Double A seems to be saying, okay, yep, you know what, go. I was held down, I was a little quiet in the first half. I'm gonna lead by example here in the second. And Billy White trying to lead by example himself. The shot was up, no good, CJ was there. But the ball will go to the Magic, 7.55 yep. to go. It's now a one point game, 53-52, wow. Hurricanes lead. You know, after that first quarter, and they had, you know, 20, 20 plus points between both squads, it took me back to that 87 86 overtime game. <laughs> I said, this won't be that game, that's for sure. Well, that was a physical, instant classic, no doubt. Williams open for three. Oh, CJ closed down one. quickly. It rolls around the rim a couple of times. Jeremy Williams has had that shot roll around and not find the bottom of the cylinder. Clink scales. Now the Hurricanes in their half court. Look at Watson. Sees an eye for the bucket, floats it in. Denzel Taylor, the third leading rebounder on this Magic team, grabs another defensive board and look at double A. Right again. All the way. So again, Anderson oh, a lot more involved in the offense here in this third quarter. But again, you talk about these veterans that can turn it off and on almost at will. We're seeing that uh, from double A. I mean, what, four or five possessions attacking that basket. 7.20 left in the third quarter. I'm Scott Squires being joined on the broadcast by the Deputy Commissioner of the NBL, Audley Stevenson, and we are locked in another good game wow. here between Halifax and Moncton. A great crowd on hand on a Sunday afternoon, and we've got a one-point game with 7.08 to go. Corey! Corey might have been across the border <laughs> when he let that one go. When he sees his spot, He's taking it. he will take it for sure. Clink scales now. CJ comes out to run some interference. Clink scales, takes wow. it himself. Nice wow. pass behind the back. CJ couldn't get there. Anthony with the defense. Thomas stops, puts the shot up. He was open. Couldn't Almost get it too to much go. time there. Yeah, I think he might have had too much time to think about it. No doubt. Clink scales now. Bit of a track meet opening up here midway through this third quarter. Clink scales into the hands of CJ Washington. Here's Mike Poole. Gets it to CJ, goes right into the defender, and they're going to say no Offensive, basket as no Terry basket. was there. And we talked about that. Yeah. The deadline moves on Monday, and here's a big move Moncton made just before the deadline. Juan Patillo Mr. checking Patillo. back into the game. And he led the league last year in rebounding for the week, playing for the Windsor Express. Uh, was a solid double double on a nightly basis, and he's going to add uh, a huge dividends to the club. Here is Juan now, gets it inside. Nice feed to Denzel. Oh, Denzel couldn't finish. finish. He just had a little bit of defensive on the other side of Patillo Billy. and Billy White, arms in the air. You know, Billy, he's he gonna make it. his impressions felt if he doesn't like something. That he will, that he will. So, so tough down low, Billy. Really That's proud of the way he's been playing this year, actually. Really leading this club. Nice look inside, Terry Thomas, double T, backing in Watson now. Thomas steps back with Watson right on top of him, and Terry Thomas, the leading scorer this season with 20 per game for the Magic, puts a couple more on the board there. And yeah, this Watson-Thomas matchup has been fun to watch, I'll tell you that. C.J. Washington, now look at Patillo, puts a little thrust into him defensively. Billy White looking for somewhere to go, Taylor comes out to help Poole baseline, puts it up. Denzel Mike was Poole. there, but Poole gets it to go, flexes the muscle, looks over to the Magic bench, and he'll go to the line. The great game uh, continues for Mike Poole. Hey, Mike Mike has been really asserting himself. You know, we saw a game uh, this past week where he scored 25 points, not missed a shot. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a capable shooter, and he's looking what he's doing tonight. Uh, I got him down for 19. 
529 here, 57-54. So we're in our media timeout. We'll keep you with us for this timeout, then we'll get Dave to jump back on. Absolutely. But before we let you go, Audley, of course, there's still regular season time left, and of course, what should be a very exciting playoff. Absolutely. But as we look ahead, you know, fans are always curious what's coming down the road for the NBL. And of course, in your role as Deputy Commissioner, talking to all the ownership groups like you do, I'm sure that you're talking about what's going to be happening beyond. What can fans look for? A couple of things maybe next season to get excited about. We, 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 you know, we haven't had deep discussions yet in terms of what fans can see for next season. Uh, we're, we're really focused on the here and now. We definitely know uh, one of the things we're going to see a Sudbury franchise, uh, and, I, and I've been in conversations with them quite regularly the last several weeks, and uh, they are excited. Uh, they can't wait to hit the hardwood. Uh, they'll go, they're going to be in action announcing their team name and logo, that kind of stuff, in April. So I'll be heading up to Sudbury to be a part of that special announcement. Uh, and then and, and when you have a new team that comes with that kind of excitement, you, know, you can't help but just be part of that. So uh, that certainly is a big thing. Uh, we're looking, obviously, the playoffs, our second season. And, you know, uh, that's a lot of fun. And, uh, I mean, for me, I love playoffs. I can't wait to get that going. And final thing for you, Audley, a great crowd on hand yeah. here this afternoon. We've seen really good crowds right around the NBL. And, of course, fans getting to watch online through the live streams as well. TV One covers these games yep. here regionally. But what message would you like to, the fan, to give to the fans who faithfully come out and watch the games both in person and on the broadcast? First off, thank you, thank you, thank you. Enough cannot be said. Uh, you know, we, are, on behalf of our players, our teams, our ownership group, the Board of Governors, uh, absolutely thank you for your ongoing support. Uh, quite honestly, we wouldn't be here without you. And, uh, you know, we do this for the fans. I want to show our appreciation. Well, listen, Audley Stevenson, uh, you do a great job. You're a great ambassador for the NBL, no question about it. And uh, enjoy the rest of this game. And we'll look back to seeing you here in Moncton, certainly maybe even at playoff time. What do you think? I uh, just might happen. <laughs> That's nice, Audley Stevenson, the Deputy Commissioner of the NBL. We certainly thank Audley for his time. Great to have him on and very exciting to see the things that are happening with the league, both currently and into the future. We'll welcome my partner, my regular partner, Dave Tingley, back onto the broadcast. And Dave, a continuation here into this third quarter that we saw for perhaps the latter stages of that second quarter. Uh, well, yeah, and Halifax, again, still kind of getting what they want. Moncton has made a little bit of an adjustment on that screen roll. They're getting the hands on some more things, um, sending guys at the rim out towards them a little bit more, pushing them out, and uh, took a charge there. You saw Terry down low. So they're get, trying to make an adjustment there a little bit to try to make things a little bit more difficult, and it's worked out. Uh, but still, it's a bit of a struggle down here on this end still so far. Double A's at least gotten a little bit going to the rim, a little bit... Uh, that makes things a little bit easier for the Magic, hopefully, the rest of this game. Terry <laughs> Thomas, what a kick out from double A. <laughs> Anderson went baseline. Beautiful kick out all the way outside to Terry. You thought he might do the three, but instead puts it on the one. floor and rattles the rim. And for that one, I got to steal a call from last year. Terry Thomas hates rims. So that's good to see from Terry. Two-point game, 58-56. Clink scales now from outside. Shot off the back of the iron. Look at Washington with the rebound and gets the putback. So the offensive rebound and the putback. Four-point game, Anderson. Audley and I talked about it, and you just mentioned as well, Anderson a lot more active in the offense here in this third quarter. Corey Allman gets it to Terry. Terry had that big jam moments ago, gives it back to Corey, and Corey is fouled on the move, and that's going to go against Mike Poole. And this, is what, this is what the Magic are getting stuck with a lot. Their primary movement, their secondary movements cut off by Halifax, and, uh, and they got to go to the third, and that one's a, just using a, a, a just one-on-one, -on -one, facing them up and going one-on-one, -on -one, and that's a difficult proposition against these quality Halifax defenders. And Billy White's not in a good mood this afternoon. 3.32 <laughs> to go in the third quarter. It's a four-point game, Hurricanes lead. Jason Caliste on into the game now for Halifax. Juan Patillo, Patillo has that ball, steps back. Patillo couldn't get the range there, and that could just be a case. You know he's still he's just, finding his comfort zone on this floor. Yeah, it's a different gym. It's a different atmosphere. It's a different speed. You know, he's just kind of get his legs under him. Those are shots, fans, that are going to go down. Juan Patil, and you see, he's got, he's uh, can handle the ball. He can create shots for himself. He's just, it's just a little bit of rust. He's going to work off there. Not that he has been playing ball, but 
This is a different level here than the Finnish league he was playing in, for sure. And a little bit quicker. It's a different game. Zimmerman. Bounce pass back there. Dixon into the game. Puts the long range jumper up. First time we've seen Ronaldo Dixon. He wears 22 in blue for the Hurricanes. Anthony Anderson, so active in this quarter, slashes inside, took the contact, and he'll go to the line to shoot a couple. Yeah, and it's been tough going for AA, but he's just gradually feeling things out a little bit, and uh, his decision-making's been really good about when to get that shot up on the glass in this quarter, not turning the ball over. So, so that foul on Taquan Zimmerman, that's his first. Anthony Cox into the game now for the Moncton Magic. Double A missing another free throw there. And well, in a tight game, these can become so very important. He bounces in the second. And so Theon <laughs> Reefer back into the game. Mike Poole will take a quick breather. I don't imagine Mike Poole will be out for too long for the Hurricanes. No, I don't think so either, yes. Reefer's just kind of that spell that they're going to give. They're given uh, these minutes that would normally go between Antoine Mason and, and his backup, uh, Mike Poole, are going to Mike Poole primarily today. So Reefer's just going to kind of balance things out. Zimmerman, shot didn't go, and Dixon over the top there of Anthony Cox underneath, so that's a foul on Dixon. And here's the benefit of Patillo. When you got Patillo on the floor with another big guy, uh, Moncton's defensive rebounding problems will, will pretty much go away. That's was two solid box sets there by the Ant-Man and Patillo. Here's Anthony Anderson again taking it in there, but Clink Scales stole it away, stripped it away, bounce pass inside. C.J. Washington underneath gets the hoop and the harm, and C.J. liking that. And Patillo was trying to get back there. He was gesturing, I'm, I'm trailing the play, I'm trailing the play. Just wasn't able to get back after being stuck under the hoop at the other end. And Terry Thomas is protesting. But yet again, the unblemished record of referees not reversing their calls continues. 62-57. Since the Hurricanes took their first lead, it's been tight, but they haven't relinquished it. They've been hanging on there, four-point lead, five-point lead, now a six-point lead. And really, the scoring's been at a premium here ever since the first quarter. Let's be honest, there's been very little quarter given defensively with these teams. And when they do get opportunities, they're not going down right now for the Magic. That was an easy layup for Terry Thomas. We've seen him make that. And Coach Salerno and the Magic bench, everybody up after that last drive by Terry. CJ shot short. Look at it, battle against three Magic players. Couldn't get their put back to go, but CJ very active on the glass. Patillo now gives it to Terry Thomas. Terry takes it in against Reefer, backs away. Got away with the travel for sure. Halifax players were gesturing for travel right away, but no call came. But they get the ball back anyway. 123 to go in the third quarter. Six point lead here as the Hurricanes look to stretch it out even more. Kling scales into the paint, puts the shot up, scoops it up and under. Tap back chance comes down. Now it's Terry Thomas. Terry with pace bounces it to Cox. Cox couldn't lay it in. And Reefer with the rebound. He was set up nicely, couldn't get the finish. Cliff back the other way, leans in the defender, and he does get the shot to go. So a miss at one end and a bucket at the other. Yeah, and the Magic are just missing the bunnies even there. The outside shot isn't going down, but now these right-handed layups from the layup line and warm-up. They're not getting to go down either. Anthony couldn't get that shot to go. The other Anthony, Cox does get the put back, and Cox slaps the hands together. Feels a little better about that trip. And the Magic are again lucky here. Their defense keeping them in it, but points at a premium both ends. But Halifax kind of struggling a little bit with their screen roll here since early in this quarter. The Magic are doing a little bit better job of staying solid. They're not, uh, Kling Scales was really operating at a high level there for two and a half quarters here, getting around that screen, getting his man in his butt and doing whatever he wanted. And the Magic seem to be doing a better job of getting around, getting their hands on some things, bothering stuff, uh, getting their hands up, challenging at the rim. So all those factors are going to make it a little bit tougher on Halifax here. Anderson out of the game, Al Stewart on the floor now. And look at Zimmerman taking it strong inside. Rebound down to the floor. Zimmerman somehow came out of the pile with it. Another tip back chance by Ramel Brown. And then Patillo got the rebound the other way. Police took it underneath. 
And he got challenged there right at the baseline, but a nice sequence at one end, and then Halifax had to chase Moncton all the way back down to the other end of the floor. And Halifax is sending their sending their guys to the offensive glass, that's for sure. And created some, uh, some uh, extra opportunities down at that end. They just weren't able to convert, but C.J. Washington and Mike Poole really doing a job on the glass with 11 and 9, respectively. And Jason Calise at least gets a chance to pull this back within three here going to the fourth. Pardon me, four. 3.4 left in the third quarter. 65-60 now after Calise makes the first. So Jason Calise, one for one on this trip, will look to make it two for two. And as you said, if he can hit this one, we've got a two-possession game and a four-point lead for the Hurricanes. Another gritty, tough affair between these two Atlantic Division rivals. Zimmerman at the buzzer, and he gets fouled. He banks it in. Are they going to give him the continuation? <laughs> Brian State says no. It was on the line, and forget the whole, all of that. Just the fact that Zimmerman, the circus-style shot, and he banked it, no less. Called it for sure, too. <laughs> no, no question about it. Absolutely. I make those all the but time. They're saying... They're saying he stepped out of bounds before he ever tossed it up. Well, credit the official, Brian States. He was right there in front of our broadcast position and made the emphatic call that he had stepped on the end line and out of bounds. Kalise now at the buzzer for three. Almost, but the shot didn't go. The buzzer sounds, and that is <laughs> three quarters of tooth and nail basketball in the books. And it's the Halifax Hurricanes on the road, David, leading by four. And a couple of things I'm going to look for here going to the fourth quarter. One is what adjustments Coach Salerno and his staff makes offensively. What they're doing right now, it's not working. Right? It's not working for them. It's really not. Now, they did get a couple of easy shot opportunities at, towards that end of that quarter that they just didn't cash in on. But still, uh, settling for the jump shot a lot. It's not going down. They're not getting to the offensive glass, only five for the game. And so what adjustments do they make? And number two, um, what's going on with Billy White over here on this end? I'm not really sure. We'll be interested to see. He really showed up his coach a little bit coming off the floor, and Coach Leslie didn't look pleased about it. And uh, he's been sitting over there on the bench, and we'll see what the mood of Billy White is when he comes back in. He's been frustrated all day. And uh, we'll see if he even gets back on the floor. I don't know if Coach Leslie wants to send a message to him there or not. Probably not. Probably won't want to play games with a, with a key division matchup. But um, he's definitely struggled today as Billy White. Only four points. And you got to figure, just like last time out, okay, he's been quiet. But at some point, it becomes kind of Billy White time for these guys. Um, just as it did in the fourth quarter in overtime last time out when he had 12 of his 18 in those two sessions. You mentioned Mike Poole. You mentioned Mike Poole. You mentioned Tyrone Watson. You throw in C.J. Washington, and those three gentlemen have combined for 49 of the Hurricanes' 65 points. Offensively for the Magic, it's been Terry Thomas with 16, and he's the only Magic player in double digits right now. Anthony Anderson was certainly a lot more active on the offensive end of things for Moncton in that third quarter. But as you said, they just seem right now to not be having any rim luck at all, getting anything to go either outside or inside. But as we saw in the last game, and you said it was Billy White, you throw all that off the table because things can change in a blink of an eye between these two teams. Maybe. Last game it was Watson, or excuse me, it was uh, Mason in the fourth quarter and then White in overtime that were the difference makers for Halifax. And he's right back on the floor to start the fourth. So obviously whatever differences or pains happen there. They worked him out over there on the sidelines, and that's good. Now well, Mike Leslie's a veteran coach. He knows how to handle his players. He does. Thomas has it ripped away there as two very strong individuals come together. Terry Thomas for Moncton and Tyrone Watson for the Hurricanes, and that's almost a UFC fight I'd like to see. <laughs> and Tyrone Watson is no dummy. He knows what Terry, Wa Terry Thomas is looking to do. He's looking to get to his right hand. He's such a good finisher that way. He's so strong that way, and he knows how to play that, how to play that man, and he get his hands in there and made something happen. Ramel Brown, he knows who the hot guy is on the Hurricanes. It's Mike Poole, 
and Mike Poole adds to his total with two more. That's 22 on the game now for Mike. And the Magic just look a little flat-footed there on some of these movements from Halifax, and they're not, again, they're not anything exotic. It's just basic. Here's Juan Patillo, strong to the rack, and Juan Patillo with a couple of points, and those are two very welcome points, his first two as a Magic player. Yeah, and you see he's mobile, and Halifax again was calling for a travel, but looked like it was legal to me from where we were standing, and he can put the ball on the floor and create. Here's for Billy. a guy his size, and there he is on the box out again, wiping the glass clean. Juan looking more and more comfortable here. That's a good sign for the Magic. And now with the turnover there, tried to burst through three and four guys, and that's tough with a long, lengthy Halifax defense. 67-63, fourth quarter, not quite a minute and a half old. Watson. Terry Thomas on him. Again, there's that good matchup. Two physical players. Watson puts it up off the glass, and Patillo grabs another board. And so Terry did a much better job holding his ground against Tyrone Watson as he pounded it on the floor, looking to get to the glass on the post up. So it remains a two-possession game, four-point lead for the Hurricanes. Thomas from outside. That went to the left. Patillo tried to get that rebound against Watson. And Tyrone Watson went down awkwardly. He gets helped up by Ramel Brown, and he's back into the play. And he was kind of awkwardly down on that right knee that's going to need the surgery in the postseason. Zimmerman bounces it into Ramel Brown. He lost the handle for a minute and gets it back. They work it around the outside now. CJ, or excuse me, that's Billy White, working it into Mike Poole. Time expires, and I don't think Poole realized where the shot clock was. Nope as he spun around, put the shot up, but beforehand, the shot clock expired, so the Hurricanes turn it over. 67-63 remains your score. Chance now for the Magic to pull it to a one possession game as Al Stewart takes Learner. it down the right side. Coach Lerner with a very specific play call. He wanted Cox, to run there. Baseline against Brown. Cox and Brown still standing with his arms in the air thinking, hey, that was good defense on my part, but that's going to be a foul on Ramel, I believe. Yeah, Clint, Clint Scales will check back in. That's the, it is indeed the second foul now on Ramel Brown. Watson is limping a little bit. But you can tell Coach Leslie, you can kind of hear what he said. He says, I'm just giving you a blow. We'll go right back into here in a couple minutes. So we want to make sure that Watson was fresh for the stretch run of this fourth quarter. Important free throws now as we're into the fourth quarter. Always important, but they... Definitely take on a bigger significance when you get down to the stretch. Anthony with the little twirl behind his back. Looks to make it a two-point hurricane lead. And he does, so a good trip for Anthony there as he's two for two. And it is indeed now two-point lead for the Hurricane, 67-65. Clink scales, bounces it to Brown. Brown outside top of the key for Billy White. White steps to his right. Takes it in now against Patillo. Off the back of the iron. Cox was there, got a hand on it, but it comes to Poole from outside. Hits the front of the iron. Kalist back up the other way. Near side now for Jennings. Brent spins around, left hand, swatted away. Brown just got a piece of it. Patillo now has it. 12 on the shot clock. Jennings again. Brent Jennings behind the back. Nice move, takes it in deep. Shot clock winding down. Brent Jennings gets that to go, and we are tied. That's a tough shot. Brent Jennings going to his left, having to step back there. Not the shot he wanted to take, but the one he was forced into, and he made it anyway. Crowd chanting defense, defense now as Poole puts up another long-range bomb that doesn't find the mark. And now it's back into the hands of the Magic. So the Magic now get the stop and a chance to go back into the lead. And it's going to be a timeout here by Coach Leslie. A little run by the Magic, getting it back even. And he's going to want to talk about some things. And it's interesting, you see here, I think one of the things that Coach Salerno was showing here with his lineups in this game is that he's going to want to, with Patillo now on board, he's going to want to play some more two big lineups that they haven't been doing against Halifax so far this year. And it hurt them a little bit last time out, giving up so many offensive rebounds and our, go to our out-of-town scoreboard for the first time, and Island Storm running it up on Cape Breton, in Cape Breton, 78-52 to 52 right now, and just getting underway in Niagara is London and Niagara. So 
Uh, well, actually, they're pro oh, actually, I did see on Twitter um, that there's going to be a delay to the start of that game because they had a basket problem in Niagara. So that's why it hasn't uh, no score showing up, fans. So if you're on the NBL Canada website wondering why the scheduled 2 p.m. Eastern time game up in Niagara has no score or stats, it's because the game, I think, is still delayed. Hopefully they'll be able to get underway soon, but that uh, Island and Cape Breton score, and Cape Breton sometimes, and it's today, they don't, they don't get a chance to see the stats there, but we'll wonder what what uh, what the Island's doing strongly out there today to bring out a 26-point lead in the third quarter, but that's the race for the fourth and final playoff spot in the uh, Atlantic, Scott, and Duke Mundy and the and the Cape Breton Highlanders were kind of the favorite in my mind to get that fourth spot, but after he went to the G League, had to be replaced by Richard Wack and lost Kevin Lozell as well. Um, Islands kind of got the leg up on that one, matchup, I think. Well, yeah, and it's interesting. You talked about that race. The Island Storm have one game in hand over Cape Breton, and if they can hang on and get that win today, they will have one more win than the Highlanders and have that one game in hand. So, again, this is where you really start to do some scoreboard watching down the stretch into the regular season with the playoffs just around the corner. Calise whipped that ball inside to Patillo. Nice match up here. Patillo on white, and the ball gets knocked out of bounds. And I know it's only his first game, but you're already seeing Juan Patillo looking more comfortable on the floor. Yeah, well, you see how adept he is at handling the ball. And for a guy his size to be able to go you know, between the legs and around the back the way he does, and not just for show, to actually create a shot for himself, that's going to be that's a good weapon for him for a guy his size. Little left-handed runner from Jennings. No good. Halifax again now into their half-court set. Tie game, 67 all. 8.05 to go, quarter four. Look at Clink Scales. Works it around. Washington top of the key for three. Front of the iron, back of the iron, and down into the hands of Caliste. He moves it up to Al Stewart. Al zips it to Caliste. Caliste faked the shot, takes it inside, zips it over to Cox. Quick touch pass outside, back of the iron as Patillo took that nice little touch pass and put the baby shot up, but he couldn't get it to drop, and Billy White now back the other way with Patillo on him. And that's an Al with the double down, getting a foul from Billy White. Such quickness with the hands and the feet from Al before you know it. You put that ball on the floor as a big guy before you know it, Al's on top of you. And I've suction got a, cup hands of his. Just watching Al Stewart, how quick he is, lightning quick reflexes and those Subtle, subtle hands that he has. I imagine he would be a nightmare to play one-on-one, -on -one, just oh. like a one-on-one -on -one pickup game. Forget about it. No thanks. Here is Al now. Steps back, puts it up from the corner. Poole with the rebound, and he'll bring it back the other way. Giving it off to the general. It's Clink Scales. Inside, C.J. Washington takes a look over his shoulder, decides to drop his shoulder into Cox. Baby hook was no good, but Billy White is there to clean up the garbage and put it back. And he pushed Patillo right under the hoop there. And that's something that uh, that's something that he did effectively in the last time out last Friday. Jennings steps back, puts that shot up for three. Denzel Taylor's gonna check back in. Let's see. Oh, it is for Cox. So Patillo's gonna stay out on the floor. 6.49 to go in the fourth quarter. And he's tight gonna game. Switch it up. Yeah, he's gonna put. Patillo on to C.J. Washington, put Denzel back on Billy White, which is the matchup that Coach Salerno likes. Zimmerman, Kalise stepped around Washington. Zimmerman saw the opening, and the smooth jump shot from Zimmerman hits the pay dirt bottom of the bucket. Yeah, shot has been going for Zimmerman today, but take one there. He's a guy who likes going to his right, which is rare for uh, more rare for a right-handed guy, but he's comfortable going that way, and Look pretty sweet going down. Stewart looking for somewhere to go. Gives it off to Jennings. Now down low for Patillo. Here's the Patillo on white matchup. And Patillo looking for a call there. He's got it slapped away. Al follows up, though, right underneath as the shot clock expired. And they're looking back. The referee's conferring with one another. And they confirm that it's going to be Hurricanes ball. Jer Jeremy Williams back into the game. Patillo will take a seat. But for fans wondering just how much these two teams battle each other defensively. Halifax, 109.9 .9 points a game on average, second best in the NBL. Moncton, 106.6 .6 points per game average. That's fourth best in the NBL. 
We've got five minutes and 50 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. It's 71 to 67. Yeah, and this is, and since the first quarter, I mean, the first quarter was fairly high scoring, and we've had just nothing going for the offensive offenses here ever since. And uh, yeah, it's just tough sledding here, and and the Magic have tried to go to some different looks, some different lineups to get some different things, and. They just haven't gotten enough going to the basket. The point, the, you see the, the difference in the point, uh, the pa uh, points in the paint, and you see the difference in the offensive rebounding and second chance points. And uh, yeah, that's that's uh, given Halifax a little edge here. It's 46-32 on the points in the paint, 16 to six on the second chance points in the favor of the Hurricanes right now. And both teams shooting in the mid 30s for field goal percentage. Moncton. 34.7% on 25 of 72 from the floor. And Halifax not much better at 36.3, 29 of 80 from the floor. And that's something that Halifax typically has done very well. Their field goal percentage usually hovering around 47, 48%, second best in the NBL. So both teams shooting well below their season average. And again, Magic was six for 10 from the three point line in the first quarter and since they're a one for 11. Look at Billy White lean into the defender, but good job by the Magic underneath the glass. Al Stewart now. The spark plug, Al, and Billy White absolutely rejected him with authority, flying in from behind, a la LeBron James. Yeah, you saw that coming. We would have done a better job to be a little bit more gentle with that shot and keep it under control. Williams from outside. Jay Will with the thrill for the crowd. And the same way the Khalees spot is that 45-degree angle shot. Jay Will from straight away loves it, that, that spot. Is, that is definitely his comfort zone right there. Hurricanes on offense now. This is Poole, works it to Zimmerman. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Zimmerman bounces it to Billy White. Quick zip over to Poole. Poole steps to his left, leans into the defender Jennings. And Poole's going to go to the line to shoot two. Joe Salerno almost at half court now, talking to the referees about that last call. And... Yeah, and the argument is, and I, it's a valid one here. I mean, Brent Jennings was beaten, but he recovered, and he had his feet set, and Poole seemed to jump sideways into that shot. So that's the first foul on Brent Jennings. First team foul for Moncton here in this fourth quarter. 5.07 to go, and Coach Salerno still incensed at that last call. And he's upset that the referee didn't seem to have the angle on it either, which is... And then I get, which is valid, but it's more my concern is more that he just jumped into it. And Denzel threw that one into the crowd. Nice hands by the spectator sitting <laughs> courtside to handle the rock there as it came over towards them. And some of the guys were asking for a touch there, but no go. Pool Poole again. Pool and he gives the big roar as he gets that shot to go. Mike Poole's excellent afternoon continues. It's a four-point lead for the Hurricanes. Here's Jennings. Jennings takes it in strong, goes to that left-hand floater. He likes that move when he takes it in the paint. He went up there against Poole. And I think they're going to get Zimmerman on the foul. No, on Washington, CJ. So it's 20, not two on the foul call. I thought they signaled Zimmerman, but it's foul on CJ Washington, his third. That'll put Brent Jennings on the line. Jennings can't get the first, and the crowd, a collective groan as he misses that one. Just in front of us here, sitting and waiting to come into the game, Terry Thomas. That's five missed free throws for the Magic here. Not gotten to the line a lot, so. Jennings, a friendlier bounce on the second as he's one for two on that trip. So 74-71, Hurricanes lead. Terry Thomas back into the game. Brent Jennings will go to the Moncton bench. 4.32. Buckle up, folks. I think we're going to come down to a one-possession game, last-second affair once again, and why not? They've gone to overtime two of the three times they've met. Might be an order of the day here again. Billy White outside to Zimmerman. Shot front of the rim. Zimmerman gets his own rebound, swings it all the way outside to Klingscales. Cliff now calls the defense, or excuse me, the offense. Zimmerman again tries the other side. Same result, though. Denzel Taylor with the defensive rebound. And Anthony will bring it up. And somebody's got to step up for the Magic. Somebody's got to get the ball in their hands, 
and create a play, create something, make a shot here. Khalees. He's going to be the guy that steps up. Rebound, okay. Denzel. Great job by Denzel to follow that shot in by Khalees. And Denzel with the bucket on the putback. And Denzel's been quiet today. The Hurricane has not been blowing at a high speed today against the Hurricanes, but he's always got that chance with that, his ability to get to the glass to make a difference here late. Nice feed over to Clink Scales, and Clink Scales with Anderson closing the gap, hits the three ball. And he's just got that knack for making the big one, Scott. We've talked about it before. Been in this league for so long, just has that capability to step up and make one when you need it. So every time that Moncton tries to make a stop and put a run together, Halifax has an answer. Denzel gets swatted away. Billy White making his presence felt again. Thomas, with the shot clock winding down, couldn't get the shot to drop. And again, another trip down the floor with no points for the Magic. Empty trips after empty trips right now. And, and Coach Sarno says they need one. This is a big defensive trip for the Magic. Coach Leslie calling out the play to Clink Scales. They communicate. Floor to sideline and back. Here's Poole. Clink Scales who just hit that three ball moments ago. Clink Scales to Poole from the corner. Poole in, out, rebound. Comes to Anderson. Here's Terry in the open floor and he's fouled by Clink Scales. And that's a pretty good foul right there by yeah. Cliff. Yeah, another smart one for sure. And that's going to be something to look at here. There hasn't been a lot of fouls called in this quarter at all. Something, when it gets down to it late, you got to think someone's going to have to give a foul to put somebody on the line here late. And if you haven't, if you got to give two or three or four fouls to get to the bonus, that could be something to keep an eye on here in the last two and a half minutes. So timeout called. 2.33 left to go in the fourth quarter. The last game here, 87-86. Now they're kind of on pace for roughly that point total. Both teams. We'll be lucky to get to 87-86 yeah. here today unless it goes to overtime well, again. I, I mean, this... I mean, since the first, I mean, you look at the, you, the first quarter ended 28-23, and since then the Magic have scored 15, 18, and now 12 points so far in this fourth quarter. I mean, it's it's just it's just a drought here that's lasted almost full three quarters for the Magic here. So with just about two and a half minutes left to play in this fourth quarter, four-point lead for Halifax. Keep an eye on the aggressive defense of the Moncton Magic. They have a way. We know how good the hands of... Al Stewart can be, same thing with Anthony Anderson on down the line. This Moncton Magic team leads the NBL in steals per game at 8.6. It's something that can work to their advantage, and they're going to need, as we see some of the highlights here, but they're going to need some defensive stops, and a couple of steals would go a long way to help in the cause here as they trail by four. Yeah, and they've got some hands on the balls here in the, in the, fourth, in the uh, third and fourth quarter that they weren't really doing much. Uh, towards, especially in the second quarter, Halifax was getting whatever they want offensively. We talked about it, but they're getting some hands and some things. Created a few turnovers. Both teams up to 11 on the game. Not an extraordinary amount, but um, yeah. So the Magic are gonna have gonna look gonna have to get some stops here down late with their offense not clicking at a high level today. So who is it going to be for the Magic to step up defensively and offensively? Kaliest. He leans over. Couldn't will that shot to go, and Klingscales just calmly grabs the ball, and he'll just meander it up the floor. It looks like that's what that's what they were looking for. They were looking to get a three off, and and uh, I would question that strategy if I was them. I mean, I'd be looking to go at the basket the way Halifax certainly is. Billy White takes it baseline against Williams. Terry Thomas came over with some backside help, but the foul is going to be on Anthony, or excuse me, on Jeremy Williams. If you leave Jer if you leave anybody one on one with Billy White on the wing like that, allow him to get to that high post extended, let him square up and put the ball on the floor, it's going to be trouble, and you got to send somebody before he's at the rim. And Billy, front rim, back rim, down through the cylinder for you, the first. And you don't get it. You don't really get a taste for how um, vociferously the fans. Um, berates Mr. White <laughs> on the road. You don't get a taste for it until you uh, get kicked out of your chair for six minutes at the start of the third quarter and stand by the stands as they voice their displeasure. Underneath Taylor grabbing the offensive rebound as Terry Thomas put the long shot and up. And another just quick perimeter shot 
for the Magic. Because it's open right now, doesn't mean you got to take it. You're down five, but there's still two full minutes left. Run some stuff, try to get something going to the rim. This combination is not working right now for the Magic and hasn't in quite a while. Putting up the first kind of open perimeter shot they see, and the, and the Hurricanes know that it, it's kind of in the Magic's head. They haven't gotten shots to go, and they're, uh, and they're kind of giving them that, that perimeter shot right now. Keep an eye on the man that just checked into the game for the Magic, Corey Almond. As Taylor misses both important free throws, Taylor 0 for 2 on that trip. It stays five-point lead now as we hit 145 to go. And this is a key stop here. This, this is going to be real difficult for Moncton if Halifax runs her stuff and gets a hoop here. Clink scales now. Pressure from Anderson. Anderson leaning heavily on him underneath the Washington. And Washington making the good effort to force Moncton's defense to commit the foul. And that foul is going to be on Corey. That's the second on him. And they made a bit of an adjustment here. The, the, did the magic that didn't pan out on that one when Klink's been going around that screen and getting his man on his butt and being patient and letting the man the way he just did there with CJ. The, the magic have been sending guys kind of weak side to shut that down. You know, double team that ball, get the ball out of his hands, but send some guys weak side and give that guy some trouble so he's not wide open. Magic haven't made that adjustment consistently, and it cost him on that one, but C.J. Washington did miss the first, did miss the first free throw. Washington, the crowd in his ear, wanting him to miss the second, but he doesn't, so one for two on that trip. A six-point lead, a two-possession game, of course. That would be two three-pointers. Here's Terry Thomas. Thomas bullying his way in, goes off the glass again, just can't get it to drop. They've nice. got the looks, they've got the play run that they want, but they just haven't had just a basket luck, if you will. Just exactly what they wanted there. They ran that play, had Terry steaming over, you know, moving to his right the way he's so comfortable with. Got exactly what he wanted, but he short-armed a few of those. Corey Allman lost the handle as Zimmerman was there, and Corey uncharacteristically loses the handle on that over on the sideline and it's turned over to Halifax, 118 to go and Billy White will inbound. It's a six point lead for Halifax. And just nothing going right for the Magic at the, at the defensive end. I think here this is the play now. They realize that they're gonna need to start, they're gonna need to put the Hurricanes on the line at some point. They've only committed now, that's their fourth foul. They still need to commit three more. So I think you're gonna see some Quick ones in succession here. Pack a hurricane. That's exactly right. 110, clink scales. This game right now into the hands of Halifax. They control their destiny up by six and coming down to a minute left to play. CJ Washington, Halifax not in a hurry at all. Clink scales from downtown, rolls around, comes out. Taylor with the rebound. He looks up at the clock. Well, it's not going to be on the line, so. Magic did well there. Again, they got a little bit fortunate though. Missed the box out, but it bounced the right way for them. Salerno's gonna, Coach Salerno's gonna call a timeout here. To get a, get his next best play call called here to go in. And I'm looking here, we always have a, <laughs> we always have a player of the game for the Magic join us at the end of the game. And I am, I'm struggling to come up with one right now. This has been such an ugly session here since the first quarter, the only, natural one to look at would be the leading scorer Terry Thomas with 16 points. He's got eight boards but seven for 22, 0 for 5 from the three-point line. You know several turnovers. Uh, missed, missed quite a few bunnies here. I know if you ask Terry, Terry's not going to pick himself for the player of the game for this game, that's for sure. And he's the only guy in double figures so uh, we'll have to look and see <laughs> maybe someone comes up big here in the last 54 seconds and takes it from him. This might be your toughest player of the game decision Ooh. all season long. But you know, two teams coming in here this afternoon, we know how hard they play each other, but they've been playing well as of late. Halifax came in here, they have been eight and two in their last 10, and Moncton just behind them, seven and three in their last 10, and both teams coming off wins. Uh, last week, the last game for the Moncton Magic was right here at home, a 101-83 win over St. John. And just a couple of days ago, down in Cape Breton, Halifax won 115-101. So both teams have been playing well at the right time. But when these two teams come together, 
you kind of throw all that out the window because it just becomes a titanic struggle. Well, you do. They're just they're so well matched, and and uh, and and their their dynamic offensive games are just completely neutered here by the defensive job that they both do. And uh, yeah, it's just so tough to separate them. It's kind of like they're kind of twins that way, and it's tough to separate. And it ends up as a defensive struggle every time. This is a big one. But and that shot well off the mark from Anthony Anderson as Corey put it into Anthony's hands. He had a fairly yeah. good look. And it becomes, we say, it becomes a pattern. You miss shot after shot after shot. And everything's contested and contested and contested. And it gets in your brain. It gets in your mind a little bit. And it becomes contagious. And you start short-arming things. So 40 seconds to go. And this is right into the hands of Halifax as they took a good nine or 10 seconds off the clock on that possession. And again, they're gonna have to get two more fouls just to get them to the line here. 36 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. It's a six point lead for Halifax, a low scoring struggle once again for these two teams. That's why I thought maybe a minute ago they might take one or two more to get them kinda, maybe one more to get them on the brink of putting them on the line here. Halifax again just working that ball around. No foul under half a minute to go. Still no foul. Zimmerman puts it on the floor and finally Terry fouls. And that'll be 24.2. They still got to give one more. So I'm not sure what the strategy was there. I know you, you want to kind of look for a steal first if you can get it. but Well, Halifax has taken this down from about 46 seconds down to 24. Yeah, and and now Williams comes out again and fouls Washington. And it's been uh, just a smart game here late for, for Halifax. I don't think Halifax is going to put this one in the vault and save it for aesthetic purposes later to go and rewatch either, certainly. But um, they definitely uh, have done some, they've played, played, definitely played some smart ball. They haven't turned it over a great deal. Um, they did a better job executing, and they've played, uh, they've had some, you know, smart plays like that where they, uh, they've just played a better team game here than the Magic overall this afternoon. So C.J. Washington hits both. That makes it 81-73. Jason Caliste will check into the game, and I think we know why Jason's coming in, not for his defense. Yeah, At this point, you know that they're going to want, hopefully, to get something for an open look. They need points. They need a quick under 20 seconds to go. They trail by eight. Corey Allman outside. Again, nothing there. Police with the rebound. Corey again, deeper this time. Same result, though, around the rim and out. And That's that should just do about do it. The Halifax Hurricanes, two games in a row, have come in to the Moncton Coliseum and hung a W on their column and an L on the Moncton Magic side. So that now takes the Halifax Hurricanes to 19 and nine on the year, and they are putting themselves in very good position to clinch the Atlantic Division. They now have, in the loss column, a five-game lead over the Magic. The Magic fall to 17 and 14, and if you thought the last game that went to overtime was low scoring at 87-86, how about an 81-73 final in regulation? Yeah, and it's just, I mean, what can you say? Just the, the Magic tried what they, tried how they their best but they just whatever it was there just wasn't anything going to the glass there wasn't any second chance points there was just so many missed jump shots it was they were laying bricks last three quarters got nothing going and they just couldn't get anything going to the basket and then when they did we talk about missed layups that we saw here in the second half short arm and things and uh, again you just start to hear footsteps and it just gets a collective kind of uh, in your in your mind where things aren't going down and you put a lot of pressure on yourself for that next shot and if you're the man taking it it's in your brain already I got to make this one because we're because we're ice cold and you get that in your brain and you're not relaxed it's tough against the tough Halifax defense well and when you look at the scorers from the game Mike Poole led all scorers he had 25 yeah, he was for terrific. the Hurricanes in a winning cause Terry Thomas, the leading scorer on this team on the season, was the leading scorer for Moncton in the game. He had 16. And I think no matter who you are, if your leading scorer in a game only has 16 points, 
I know that scoring can be spread around, but typically that doesn't bode well when your top scorer only has 16. In this league, yeah. I mean, you're, this league is such a high, typically high scoring lead, but in, uh, in this time, and there's, yeah, and, uh, and two times is coming over here to check out the box score, and it's kind of ugly there for everybody, but um, yeah, if you're, I mean, this is typically a, such a high scoring league, and these games, like you say, you throw things out. When these two teams match up, they're so tightly matched, and and uh, just seems to whatever that combination is, whatever that recipe is, it makes for very low scoring affairs when these teams get together, at least lately. Now we're gonna have your player of the game interview in just a minute, but as we wrap up here, we've now seen these two teams play here in Moncton three times. They've played four times overall. In the four games they've played, David, two of them have gone to overtime, and the last two that we've seen have been exceptionally low scoring games, well under 100 points and even under 90 points. How do you sum up these two teams, and, and what can you see Moncton doing to kind of change what Halifax is doing against them defensively? Because you know they're going to meet again, and more than likely they're going to match up in the playoffs at some point. Well, it, it, Moncton's got to find a way, and I think getting Juan Patillo in the fold is going to help. They've got to find a way to get something going to the glass, to get something inside in the paint. And Halifax is stout there and strong, but there's got to be something that they can do to counteract that. And... Uh, They'll go, to, they'll go back to the drawing board, they'll watch all the tape, and they'll come back with the different game plan for Halifax next time. And just had a chance to talk to a couple of Halifax Hurricanes fans who are in attendance. A great contingent of Halifax fans here. Yeah, they travel the well. Coliseum today. So, on behalf of my broadcast partner, David Tingley, as well as Deputy Commissioner Audley Stevenson, who joined us, I'm Scott Squires. Thank you very much. Once again, your final, Halifax evens up the series. Two games apiece on the season as they beat Moncton 81-73. Joined now by the player of the game for Moncton, here is Terry Thomas with David.